Hi everyone and welcome back to NTE. In this little uh, video what we're going to talk about is restricting the domain of a parabola right, in order to write it as a function. Okay. So we all know that when we get to the section of inverse functions, right, we get to this problem um, around the parabola where we have to restrict its domain right, in order for it to qualify as a function. Right. So in this video we're just going to look at um, two examples of how that can play out. Right. So sometimes in an exam they can ask you to state a restricted domain for yourself and sometimes they can give you the restricted domain. Right. So in these two examples we're going to look at the cases where the restricted domain is given to you. Right. So the first one says that given that g of x is equal to 5x squared, right, and here's the restriction for x, right, less than or equal to 0, right. So we're only considering this parabola for the negative um, x values, right. So that's the restricted domain, right. So in the first part, they want us to determine the equation of g inverse, right. And notice that we are able to use this notation of an inverse function because we've restricted its domain, right. And then we need to then state the domain and range of the inverse function. And lastly, we need to sketch um, those two um, graphs on the same set of axes. Okay, so let's go. Right, so we've already spoken about the fact that um, 5x squared is an upward facing parabola. Right, but now what they've done is that they've restricted this parabola to only the negative, right, um, x, uh, x values, so. So which means that we're only looking at this arm, right, the left hand arm of our parabola, right. So now we can quickly just write down that, well, for this parabola, right, its domain is exactly what they gave to us, right, x less than or equal to 0, and its range, we can see it over here, right, it's going to be y greater than or equal to 0. Right. So now we know that another thing that happens with, um, um, what do you call it, inverse functions is that the domain and range of those two functions swap around. So this range, right, is going to become the domain for our G inverse function. Okay, so let's start off with number A. Okay, so for A, they want us to write down the equation of G inverse, right, you still go about this the same way, right, you first say let g of x uh, equal y, right? So then therefore, y is equal to 5x squared, right? And then we go through the process of swapping x and y around, okay? And that will lead us to x is equal to 5y squared, okay? Then we know that the next thing to do is to solve for y, right? And we solve for y from its current position, okay? All right? So when we do that, we're going to have to have um, 1 over 5, okay? Because we're dividing both sides by 5. That's still times x, and then we're going to need the square root, right, of this. Okay, and that's going to equal y, right? And now because we have a restricted domain, we can't write um, plus or minus. We have to decide whether is this going to be a plus or a minus, right? And that's all going to come down from the domain of your original function, right? Remember that now what's happening here is that we need to state what type of y values is this um, inverse function going to have, okay? And y values are the range, okay? So the range of the inverse function is going to be the same as the domain of your original function, right? So um, the domain of the original function was all x values less than or equal to 0, which means that this has to have a negative sign. Okay. So then um, for b, right, we now need to state the domain of g to the minus 1 of x. Okay, actually over here we can even conclude and say therefore g to the minus 1 of x 
is equal to negative square root of 1 over 5x. Okay, so that's the equation of the inverse function. Okay, now we can um, state over here that uh, the domain of the inverse function, right, that is going to be the range of the original function, so x greater than or equal to 0, right, and then the range of g inverse of x, okay, that is going to be the domain of the original function, so in our case, it's going to be y less than or equal to 0, okay. So um, if we just check over here, um, if we look at the domain of our inverse function, we're plugging in x values, right, greater than or equal to 0, right, so which means that in this position, we're only plugging in positive values, meaning that we have a positive underneath our square root, so all is good, right. Part C, okay. We now need to sketch on the same set of axes, right, the graph of G and G inverse. Right, let me just set down um, a Cartesian plane for us quickly. Okay, so now we have a Cartesian um, plane on the screen, right. So to sketch G, right, we know that, well, G has a domain of x values less than or equal to 0, right. So we have that point over here. You shouldn't be struggling to sketch the graph of 5. Um, x squared, right, we know that that is just a scaled out um, mother function, okay, and because this is an a value greater than 1, it's going to be quite skinny, right, so quite close to the y axis, right, and its range is just all the y values greater than or equal to 0, so which means that our sketch should look something like this, okay. So that's the function of g, right? Now we need to um, sketch the inverse function exactly on the same um, Cartesian plane. So then for that one, right, we now know that that's just going to have these two properties swapped around. We're now looking at a domain, right, of x values greater than or equal to 0. So there's our first point, okay, and a range of y values less than or equal to 0, so then our graph is going to be underneath over here. Okay, so this is the graph of g to the minus 1. Okay, and we all know that another characteristic of um, the inverse functions, right, is that those two functions are always the reflection of each other right about the line y is equals to x. Okay. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys next time.